wilderness years? The wilderness years? The wilderness years? Ah, the wilderness years. That odd period of time after Doctor Who was cancelled by evil eldritch warlock Michael Grade. But before, it was reanimated in 2005 by wholesome necromancer Russell T. Davis. The wilderness years are cold, dark, unforgiving, and very, very horny time for the little blue box show that could until it could With a TV return nowhere on the horizon, the fans and the people entrusted with the license decided to get weird with it. First, let's take a look at the wonderful world of books. I love a good book, especially the big thick hardbacks. They make great weapons against the man who lives on my walls. The Virgin New Adventure series, published by Virgin Publishing, a subsidiary of Virgin, penned escapades for the Seventh Doctor with a notably mature tone. And by mature, I mean some of them are really, really gross. From the Doctor abandoning Ace with a very um, a uh, touchy-feely Gilgamesh to everything in the novel Transit, which includes the banger lines, the bitter nuts help keep her awake and take the semen taste out of her mouth. And what's the matter? You never seen two trains f***ing before. However, alongside this, you also got the first steps of people who would go on to shape the television revival, including Nightshade by Mark Gattis, Love and War by Paul Cornell, and Damaged Goods by someone named Russell T. Davis. Never heard of them. However, this would all come to an end when the BBC declined to renew Virgin's license. Instead, they decided to try and do things themselves. No way it could get any weirder than the VNAs, right? So anyway, let's talk about the war in heaven. But it's not just books. Doctor Who also came to the exciting zeitgeisty and cutting edge world of VHS with BBV, a company producing Doctor Who-ish, maybe, if you squint it, not really, content that ranges from legally dodgy to straight up doing crime. Speaking of crimes, since there's legal action being taken against them right now over this, I won't comment more, except to say that these things are wild, ranging from Doctor Who with the serial numbers gnawed off by hungry rats to whatever the Zygon Paul movie is supposed to be, these films depended on an inherently deceptive model, promising something that looks close enough to real BBC merchandise that it could trick a prospective buyer, while emphatically not being that. What I can recommend is the early output of a little group you may have heard of called Big Finish, which features some of the most experimental and well-executed Doctor Who ever made. From spare parts to creatures of beauty to the fear monger, there really is something for everyone. Yeah, there's a few duds like Rapture, Minuet in Hell and the frankly disgusting Necromantea, but there's also Holy Terror, Jubilee, Skirtso, and even some not written by Rob Shearman. However, while novels, audio dramas, and whatever that Zygon Paul movie was supposed to be were great for the more niche segments of the fandom, the heart of the wilderness years beats with the persistent desire to bring Doctor Who back to television. Numerous attempts were made, each with its own blend of hope and disappointment. <laughs> oh boy, was there a lot of disappointment. The TV movie in 1996, a co-production between Fox and the BBC, may have been intended to revive interest in the series and capitalize on Paul McGann's sexy, sexy face skin to capture the hearts of a new generation, but the public simply wasn't having it. Probably for the best given where they were planning on going with it, but that's a different video. Overall, Doctor Who has always been a grab bag when it comes to quality, and that's never been more true than in the wilderness years. The gems are some of the gemmiest gems to ever gem, with storytelling that could never exist in any other era of the Hooniverse, trademark Disney. However, there's also some of the worst shit you've ever seen. So I guess fundamentally it hasn't really changed and we can take comfort in the fact that not even getting Michael graded was able to take that away. So I guess the real takeaway from the wilderness years is it's a show about never, ever, ever changing. Yeah. Of course, this is only the tippity tip 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 of the iceberg. The wilderness years are a big subject and there's a lot to explore. So why not start with this video about an attempt to give Doctor Who a concrete origin story that still looms large over the franchise. I don't get it. 